Numbers, generally, in old print classes, it used to be that you spell out numbers 1 through 11 and you use numerals for 12 and above. As I've said in here, I just want you guys to be consistent, right? Um, so welcome to the world of broadcasting. I'll let you make that decision for yourself. But if you use the word 1, O-N-E, right, at one time, and then you turn around and use the numeral 1, it can throw out your anchor if you do it in the, within the same sentence. So please be consistent. Uh, you should spell out uh, hundreds and thousands and use the numeral that modifies them. In other words, 1,000 becomes the numeral 1 and the word 1,000. Got it? Just like you should use dollars. You should use um, ordinals depend on what your talent wants you to do. I would go ask them if it's tricky, but I don't like first meaning 1ST or third 3RD or fourth 4TH, right? Because now that I'm getting older, I can't see it that well. Right? And even if I can see it that well, you never know what they're going through. They might misinterpret that for some reason. So if you're actually going to use an ordinal, I would rather that you spell out the word for that. All numeric symbols should be spelled out. Dollars, cents, pounds, whatever, rupees, right? You should spell that out. Fractions and decimals are spelled out as well. Better yet, don't use them. Are we really, do unless you're t teaching in a baking class, why are we dealing with fractions? You know, I mean, you have to ask yourself what's going on there. Decimal points, too. Is it nearly one and a half million dollars, or is it one point four million dollars? Do we are we worried about that one hundred thousand dollar difference in there? And as I mentioned, right within the same context. So you have numeral twenty four to ten, not numeral twenty four to the word T E N. With abbreviations, you shouldn't do it unless it's as an acronym after the first reference. So you have the Federal Bureau of Investigation becomes FBI on second reference. Does that make sense? Um, if you have to make a correction on your script, this is why we double space them. Hopefully, you will have time to reprint your entire script. Make that change, reprint it, and you know, the, then you have a nice clean copy. But sometimes we'll be catching this mistake right on before we go on the air, and so you'll need to go in there and handwrite it in. Or better yet, go to your anchor and say, this is how you say this, or this is a mistake. You write this in so that you can read your own scrawl instead of mine. When you get your scripts as an anchor, you should mark it for content or mark it for uh, delivery as it, it, as it makes sense to you. Most anchors will develop a system where they underline words for emphasis. You know, it's 1,000 people are dead today. Not 1,000 people are dead today. You know what I mean? The, the emphasis is on how many people have died, right? So you might want to underline that 1,000. Um, some people will try to type it in bold, but again, it depends on your software. And diagonal lines or ellipses, those are the periods, dot, 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 can indicate a pause. The more you use, the more pause that you have. Spelling counts, watch out for homophones. Homophones 2, 2, and 2, T-W-O, T-O, or T-O-O. -O. Um, lovely spell check is not your friend. It really isn't. It's like the auto spell on your iPhones, right? Uh, you got to watch out for that. I have seen anchors repeatedly get thrown off because it's the wrong word in there. It's spelled correctly, but it's the wrong word. Now, pronunciation. When you have a pronunciation guide, um, what you should do in your script is type it right next to your name. So in other words, let's do my name just for uh, uh, expediency. Kuskowski, K-U-S-K-O-W-S-K-I. You're going to type that in the script as I spell it, as it's officially spelled. And then in parentheses next to it, you're going to spell it out phonetically. And I'm not talking the dictionary spelling, right? I'm talking about whatever makes sense to your anchor. You may approach them. You may want to go up to them and say, how do you say, this is how you say it, Kaskowski. How do you want me to write that, right? Or if you think it's pretty common sense or your anchor's not around, you can put it in there, C-U-S-S dash C-O-W, get it, Cal, dash S-K-I. And that parenthetical phrase should come right after the accurate sentence. If you don't have it in there, then you can use the double spacing to handwrite it in above that pronunciation guide. But the way you spell it first time through is the accurate way. Do you understand? Because these scripts are going to be a permanent record. So when I go back and I need to have Barack Obama and I need to have the rec correct uh, spelling for that, right, I have that in my script. I don't spell it out phonetically and have that as the only reference to it. Yes? Um, watch for plosives, sibilance, or alliteration. Plosives are the P's and B's. If you get too close to your microphone, your breath will pop off your microphone and you'll have a bumping sound, right? That's easily corrected. Move the microphone. This is an omnidirectional mic. You can put it anywhere around your mouth, but not directly in front of it, and you won't have that problem. Sibilance is that hard S. Seven silly swans swam silently seaward. It's um, 
it takes more effort to get rid of it, but it can be gotten rid of. In other words, you just have to practice. Be aware of how, it's like when you are analyzing your speaking voice and you realize you say like a thousand times. You gotta get rid of that. And alliteration is uh, nursery rhymes. It's a repeating consonant or vowel sound in a sentence. So how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? There's alliteration in there. You guys generally don't start that on purpose, but some kind of writing will creep in and you're using the same consonants over and over again. And unless it's done intentionally for a joke, your anchors usually will be angry because it makes them sound dorky. Do you understand? So unless you're trying to say, you know, do you, we all remember the nursery rhyme, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck, or Groundhog's Day, or something like that, you're making some kind of joke. Otherwise, change up your words so that you don't have the same consonant happening over and over again. You should write for the ear, use common language that's informal and simple. Again, how would you say this if you were talking to somebody, whoever that may be, your friend, your mom, your dad, whatever. You should always act, use active present tense verbs. You should avoid journalese, technical terms, slang, or idioms. Um, bottom line, again, you guys are better educated than your audience member. So if you have a phrase like weapons of mass destruction, you have to take a minute and say, okay, what am I really talking about here? Toxic gas, am I talking about a nuclear bomb? Right, then you might need to re reiterate or repeat what that is in a subsequent sentence. Yes, if you wanna use weapons of mass destruction on first reference, fine. But on second reference, say the nuclear bombs were detonated, blah, blah, blah. Avoid numbers. It's up to you to break them down and put them into some kind of context that we understand. Avoid metaphors and cliches. This is one of the worst things that I do. And I, sometimes I realize that I'm using metaphors as an example because my father was an English professor and it comes naturally to me. Okay? And you might have some people in your audience who English isn't the, their first language and that's a disservice. Again, your job is to disseminate information and get it out there.